Hello everyone! I am really giddy to show you what I have today. This is a free play CM3. Now this was a Kickstarter project, the creator sent this to me and he's going to be delivering these soon, I think in January, don't hold me to that, but I think they're just about to ship. He gave me an early example though to review, and uh, actually gave is not the right word, I did pay a little bit of money, not as much as what the backers paid, but I did fork out a little bit out of pocket, um, and so this was not a free test unit, but it was a discounted unit. And yeah, this, oh, this, this is a really cool device. All right. Ta-da! Okay, yeah, you probably don't even know what the hell this is. Uh, let me open it up. This is essentially a Raspberry Pi kit, and it turns an off-the-shelf Game Boy Advance into a Raspberry Pi 3. So, check this out. You basically gut the, the Game Boy Advance, you put this in there, and there's the little Raspberry Pi compute module, Raspberry Pi 3, and... Oh, this is awesome. So yeah, it's from Freeplay Tech, and they are at freeplaytech.com. Oh, I, I can't wait to put this together. This is so cool. Um, let's see, it has USB, HDMI out, uh, SD card, and um, no, no, that's a micro USB, there you go. And so oh, it's got shoulder buttons, everything like you would expect, and it has X and Y buttons. Oh, that's so cool. The Game Boy Advance, I don't know why it was never made with that, so that is really strange. It also uses lithium-ion batteries, that's really cool. So that helps out with the charging, you don't have to carry around batteries like a nut. And, uh, oh, and this is a little helper so you can correctly space the buttons. So, very cool. Uh, let me get my actual Game Boy. This is a, just an off-the-shelf Game Boy shell that I got on eBay. And uh, so yeah, this is what we're going to be using to go ahead and create this device. And you do have to modify the insides though, there's quite a bit of cutting that you have to do. And uh, I'll just go through it right now with you. Uh, let me put this stuff to the side. Um, I think it's in this. Uh, well, first of all, here's like the LCD screen and everything, so I'm gonna try to be careful with that. All right, let me just put that in there. All right, here's like the little sort of manual. Um, I wish it was a little bit more detailed as far as what you're supposed to do, but you can at least get an idea of where you're supposed to cut. So, uh, he has an instructional video which is a lot better, and I already watched that, so I know that you're supposed to cut out, like, essentially, um, you have to cut out some of this for the LCD screen. You have to make a couple cuts over here, um, cut out a little bit of the speaker part. On the back side, uh, underneath this metal plate, there's these little grooves, which is what the cartridge sits in, these little walls right here, you have to take that out and also a little bit of modification to the battery compartment. And um, let me see. Also, I think, let me make sure of this, I I'm pretty sure, but I believe I'm gonna have to modify the top of it too. Because you see, uh, you know what, that's not gonna fit on there, right? Because that's where the buttons are, the uh, X and Y that they added. But you see, these little ports that go in through the top, it looks like the, um, it looks like the HDMI port, that'll fit pretty snugly in there. I think you do have to cut, a little, cut away a little bit of the plastic, but you are going to have to do some major modification of this part to get all this to fit. And uh, yeah, I do have a Dremel. I'm going to go ahead and use that with this, so pray for me. I'm, I'm armed with a Dremel today. And uh, yeah, for the buttons, I'm going to have to drill those through. And uh, I uh, pray for me because I don't usually do these types of modifications or anything, but I'm really eager to see how this thing works. This should be a really cool device if it works as I believe it will. And um, yeah, I've got all the tools here, exacto knife, uh, freaking drills and screwdrivers, everything. So I think I have everything that I need. I hope so. And we're gonna go ahead and time it and see how long this takes. And uh, yeah, you know what? Let me go ahead and get that out. Give me just a second. Uh, I have the next bit Robin, which you all loved in that video. I'm being sarcastic. But the build to make this thing starts now. All right, 18 minutes in and I have finished the backside. I took away those little walls and also the battery compartment. And that is what it says to do right there. So. Uh, I didn't alter the top part right here because I kind of want to see how it fits together before I start cutting away at that plastic because that's going to be pretty noticeable. And um, yeah, let's just go ahead and continue the build.
Now I've started on the front, you have to take down this whole wall, and the creator, he recommended that you use an X-Acto knife, and then you just go ahead and just keep on cutting along this side until you could take out the wall. I think I found an easier way though. What I did was that I just used the plier cutter things. Uh, I just used that right here, and I just made little segments, and then you just take out each segment like you're cutting teeth, you see? So you just pull out each segment, and hopefully that'll be a lot easier than just, you know, cutting, 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 and then waiting for it to come out. Uh, and then I'm going to use the um, Dremel, of course, to soften that out. Another thing is that um, uh, you could see from the case right here that it doesn't have anything here, but on this corner, and then on these parts, it has this little raised area. And that's not good to have that because then when you put the LCD screen on there, if it's uneven and there's pressure against it, you know, with the Raspberry Pi thing, uh, that could crack your LCD. So it's recommended that you put something on this side, uh, like, you know, sort of pat it out or get rid of these. So since I already have a Dremel, I'm just going to go ahead and shave those off. And um, one of the things I had thought of, though, another modification, is that you could put something else on there. Um, like I said, just something to pat it out, like, uh, you know, tape or something. And they do sell this kind of electrical tape. I don't know what this is called, but it's like very thin electrical tape. And I think that could probably work on there. So if you didn't want to Dremel that off, uh, you could probably just pat a little bit, of, uh, you know, maybe three or four layers of tape, and that would probably even it out. Just something to keep in mind, just keeping this build a little bit simpler. And uh, yeah, let me get back to work. You see there, you go much easier. You just cut up into little segments and then just pull them out one piece at a time. Make sure though that you keep this little part right here uh, because uh, you'll see what I mean right here. Let me try to focus in. Come on. All right, this little part, let me get the knife. All right, this one right here you got to keep because let me get the shoulder button. Here we go. The right shoulder button, it has to go in like that. And it, the little spring on it, it sits right there on that part. So make sure you don't cut this one away because it needs it for the spring. So yeah, but yeah, I just wanted to share that little tip. You could go ahead and use that and then just smooth it out later, but that makes that job a heck of a lot easier. All right, guys, so I'm shaving this down. I'm making progress. However, I think I screwed up because this case, as you can see, it's like, it's weird, it's like clear case that was painted and I think that screwed me over that this was a cheap eBay case because, as you can see, I had this, um, you know, working with the Dremel while this was face down. I didn't think to put something, you know, over the screen and because of that now I have scratches uh, since it was like rubbing against while I was Dremeling on the other side. Uh, so I, I think I might need to get another front piece for it. Uh, I don't know. I mean, this is just my first build, my first build ever for this thing, so I don't really mind it if I have to do it over again, but um, yeah, yeah, that's just one thing that you should really keep in mind. So uh, don't make that mistake, and or hopefully you could just find an eBay seller that sells uh, solid colored ones uh, that have the plastic colored instead of painted. So, eh, yeah, think about that. Okay, progress. I now have the fitted LCD in there, so I'm done with those cuts. You see, just slides in there, and hooray, it is a snug fit. You could barely put a piece of paper in between those cracks. So, um, I, I even had to take apart, let me show you. Careful. I had to sand down these little uh, parts right here and right here, just so I can make a snug fit, because you will have to cut that little area that I warned you about that you have to make sure to save. You do have to uh, basically dremel that part down, sand it down just a little bit, and it is just hanging on by a sliver, so be careful with that. And um, yeah, I went ahead and cut out on this side, so that way I could just give it a little bit more room because I, I didn't feel confident in cutting more of that. And uh, yeah, so we're still making progress. I'm not going to make all the rest of those cuts. Like I said, I'm waiting to see how this whole thing fits together a little bit better before I start making those drastic cuts. I know there's also a cut right here and right here that I have to make. So we will continue. As of right now, we're going to go ahead and put in the um, X and Y buttons. So, um, let me see. I think it's, yeah, it's in this right here. That's where the little guide is. So we do this. Let me go get two buttons. 
All right, so here's the two buttons. One of them will go right here, the other one right here. All right, so you put those two buttons right there, the B and the A. Then you put this little guide right here, and it's very helpful. It tells you, like, no, stop, turn this over. You don't put it down this way. You have to be careful because the pattern is different. You see it right there, which is how I wish it actually was because I like the buttons being a little bit higher, just offset like that. And But the way it's supposed to go is like that, and that's actually a little bit cramped. You see it goes very close to the screen. I kind of don't like that, but, hey, it's the way that it's got to be. So you just hold that there. Let me get my, yeah, here we go. I'll use this screwdriver, this little tri-wing. All right, so just make sure that's a snug fit. And then I'm gonna mark them. Another one. Mark it right there. That first one, it could use a little bit more. And then, I know where to drill. So, there are the two little spots I need to drill in. And, oh, this is gonna be tense. Now I gotta drill these and hope that it comes out right. All right, another tip is that what you might wanna do is make a smaller hole first, an undersized hole, because uh, this is what I did with the right one. I made an undersized hole, and then I used the normal drill bit that would actually fit for the button that's gonna be there. So, as you can see right there, it made a much better hole and that way it doesn't drift as much because the drill bit it will it will drift a little bit while it's trying to find you know its spot right there as you can see what happened with the left one so um, you gotta be careful with that but hopefully that could help guide it just a little bit better and then make your holes like spot on we'll have to see pray for me we'll see all right that didn't come out too badly uh, as you can see right here on the left it was a little bit of a mess uh, the hole is just a little bit uh, too big, it kind of got away from me, including some scratches right here. So uh, one of the great things about this kit though is that these Game Boy Advance shells are dirt cheap on eBay. You could get them all day for 10 bucks. And hopefully with the next seller I'll make sure that you know it's a solid color instead of painted. And hopefully that will disguise you know some of the errors. But this is definitely going to be my rough draft one. And uh, it's not coming along too bad, but there are a few lessons I'm learning along the way that hopefully I can impress on you. But this is working, it does fit on there. Um, those are the two buttons for, uh, for X and Y. Uh, I just can't get it to fit just well like on there properly because of course I'm gonna have to cut off this part, uh, cut off some of this plastic over here. And that's gonna be the next part to kind of fidget around and see what I should be doing right there. So onwards, we will continue. All right, those didn't turn out too badly, and they will go ahead and fit the button caps. So here's an example. There's the button cap, and it does fit on there. But like I said, it is really close there to the screen. I wish they removed the other way around instead of closer to the screen a little bit away. Uh, I think that would also work better with my thumbs. I don't know. I don't know. We'll have to play it and see. But let's see where we're at with the build. Um, I can see things are fitting together now. Uh, let me see. Okay. So that's how that fits together. But... As you can see from the top, we're definitely going to have to start cutting that plastic. Uh, I'm sure that that little extension pore is going to need a little bit of cutting. That post needs to go away. Uh, and then the shoulder buttons, they each have, that's what they were talking about, they each have this post that's right there just getting in the way of it ever getting down in there. So the shoulder button, the micro switch, has to fit inside that little cavity on each side, and each side needs that little post to go away. Uh, all right, so the build continues. I will let you guys know what happens. All right, update. Things are starting to come together. The case wants to close, but not quite. I'm nibbling away at the plastic and seeing what needs to be fitted in there. And yes, these holes, they could be done much better by smoother hands. I'll try to round them out, but um, yeah, I, this is my first time with a Dremel, so it's, it's going to be carnage. And, um, yeah, something is stopping it from closing up here on this side, near the full-size USB port. I'm not sure what it is, but I will start investigating. Let's see. I don't think it's that part, because that's what the shoulder button goes into. Um, it might be some plastic, maybe this plastic rim right here. Or, I don't think it's anything on this side, because you see the top part 
it's fitting flush with the screw points. So I think I'm done with at least this side, the, the top side where you would find the buttons and everything. I think that is done. Um, you see, because that is starting to work out just fine. All the points are lining up. I think it's something here, but I'm like, what the hell could it be? Because, again, the shoulder buttons, that's that's all supposed to be there. I'm not supposed to get rid of these little joints because that's what holds the shoulder buttons there. Uh, so again, this is the part where it's going to take a little bit of time to kind of feel through this and see where it goes. I will update you guys. Okay, I think I found it. So I put it in here and everything seems to be matching up. However, uh, when you look at it like this, you think that everything looks okay. But it's not. This thing, it should be going into that little slot right there that I cut out for it. So, I think the problem, let me see if I could actually get it to focus in enough. I think the problem is that you see it's getting stuck right there on the edge. So in other words, the actual connector can fit through here, but it's these little edge parts which are getting stuck here on the rim. I think that's what's happening. So yeah, this is all a lot of trial and error. So, uh, yeah, let's see if that works. Alright, I think that was it. It seems to be fitting now. So all the little screw points seem to be going flush. And as long as the top piece can fit, this is the weirdest thing because let me get the top piece. All right, so it seems to be fitting well on the bottom side. And on the top side, it's a little bit of an aerobics act to get the speaker in there. I hope I got it facing the right way. Uh, all right, so then we put the top part in here. And, uh, you know what, I think it's this little part right here for the SD card. I need to make some cuts. But, because otherwise, it seems like I'm almost ready to start fitting it, like screwing it in and everything. So, let me just get that squared away, and then I think we're golden. Alright, let me try that. I will be back. Alright, I think I'm ready to start screwing things in. It seems to be fitting together pretty well. Uh, there are, you know, these big holes everywhere that um, the next time around I'm going to know how to cut these things. Like at the bottom, I don't need that much, uh, especially with micro uh, USB, you don't need that much. Unless I want to enlarge it so that, because it is kind of dug in there. So uh, unlike the full-size USB, which is just sticking out right there flush with it, um, maybe you do need a bigger hole. But I'll try to go with the Dremel and then make this a little bit smoother. But um, I think it's about time that I could start screwing things in. Uh, the only other thing is that the hole right here is a little bit bigger than this one because that thing has just been a nightmare. I was way off with the drilling, and uh, but it seems to be working well now. So Because if not, if you're not perfect to that, it's kind of leaning to the side, then it's constantly on. It, it just always registers as on. So you got to make sure that you get it like, just spot on, and that's not something that I was able to do right. And... Um, yeah, let me go ahead and start screwing this together. Let me try to round out these holes, and uh, I'll be back. All right, progress. This is actually the next day. I was not able to finish it last night. Um, I do have it unassembled, and the batteries are uh, disconnected, which uh, I'll show you why later. There's something I want to show you. Um, I was able to turn it on, though, when I had the batteries connected. I was having an issue with it, though, because the screen didn't seem to want to come on, but it turns out that was my fault. I did not install it correctly because uh, it has a ribbon which you need to put into that little slot, but then it has those little pins right there which you need to lock down. So make sure you don't forget to do that. If your screen's not coming on or if you're getting a pure white screen, then that might be the problem right there, that you just don't have the ribbon in there correctly, uh, as I did. And so I'm kind of a dummy. I did not realize that, and so I thought it was dead on arrival. But, um, and then I had a second problem because I put the, um, the image on there to go ahead and get it running with the Raspberry Pi software. I had the image on the SD card and it still wasn't working. It was just giving a white screen. But here's what happened. What you got to do is that you get that image. And I think it's in a .gz file. It will say .img. So, I mean, it's, a, it's an image file that you need to put onto the card. Um, but it will be in .gz format, which means that you do have to uh, unzip it. So use your unzipper tool, unzip that, and then use uh, another tool. Uh, I'll put some links down below. Use another tool so that, that way you could burn the image onto the SD card. You need to burn it on there, kind of like burning a CD. Uh, you need to burn the image on there, so don't load this thing up with ROMs. Don't load your SD card with ROMs and emulators and stuff like that, because you're going to lose it all if you uh, do it that way. 
Um, you have to bring it on there first, and then later you could go ahead and start adding that stuff on there. So make sure you start with a fresh SD card or one that you don't mind, you know, deleting everything on. So then you put it on there, and now it works. And of course, I can't show you though because the batteries are disconnected. I'm going to tell you why right now. Uh, I'm having trouble with the shoulder button. And uh, so, I mean, because this thing, it is fitting well. Like, it'll all close up if I wanted to right now. However, I was having a problem with that shoulder button, which I'll show you how that works. All right, here's the problem that it's having. The right shoulder button has very little travel. In fact, this thing, it, it barely works at all. And if I even close it up, like you see, there we go. Now it's snapped into place. And this thing has like almost no movement. It's just rubbing on the, um, on the micro switch right there. So that's not gonna be very good. The left one though, it seems to be working pretty well. It's not having a lot of issue there. So it's really this right one, and I have been trying so hard to figure out how to fix this. Uh, I even shaved down, as you can see right here, I shaved down the insides of uh, where the button goes because I'm like, all right, this thing is immovable. It's not moving very well. So how do I get this thing to fit in there? Uh, it must be rubbing on the case. And also I was thinking, hey, this is a painted case, so that, that little layer of paint is probably screwing it up for me. And yeah, don't go with these painted cases. That is bad news. Don't do it. Um, so I was thinking that, and it turns out that's not the problem. Watch this. Here's what's happening. Uh, let me get another one of these. It's actually the button itself. Because you can barely see it, you cannot even see it right there. But this little notch right here, this little this little stub that goes into the little round sockets right there for the buttons to keep them in place and let them swivel, that thing is just a little bit further down than this one right here, which will work. And I'll show it to you. I'll show you that right now. Give me a sec. All right. All right. Here it is with working shoulder buttons on here. And you can see that it works fine. It works just perfectly. Another thing that I should mention is that, uh, you know that little part that I told you that you should, let me see if I can take this off carefully. You know that little part that was inside here, which I said you gotta make sure that you keep that little tab right there, like don't, uh, don't cut off the whole thing. I think you don't even need that tab because these things are just resting on the micro SD switch, uh, the micro, <laughs> the micro switch, sorry. So you see they're just resting on there. I don't even think they need that little tab, but I don't know. I was re uh, it was recommended that you keep that tab there, so I'm going to leave it. But I don't think you need it. And just to prove it to you guys beyond any doubt, I'm going to use this plain Jane vanilla case that I got, this extra case. Thank God I ordered an extra one because I think I'm going to redo this whole thing. Um, I'm going to go ahead and install these. And then that'll show you how it works with these regular cheapo buttons that come with these cases. All right. You see, fits on just well. And then there you go. Both of these have really good movement. There's no problem with these buttons right here. Now let's install the aftermarket shoulder buttons, the little colored ones. And then I'll show you guys how this thing is messed up. All right. We put that on there. And now look, it won't even close. You're getting some movement right here, but you see it's not closing properly. Now, I'm going to go ahead and try to close it. I close it. And first off, it's not even closing correctly because you could hear it pop and crack. Because again, that top one, it's not fitting into the little slot correctly. And I have it closed, as you could see. And now that right shoulder button is not working. You see, it is these buttons. These buttons are the thing that is screwing it over. And that sucks because I really wanted that, um, that color scheme. I was trying to go with the Space World 2000 Game Boy look. And I guess I won't be able to do that because those buttons are not working properly. I'm not going to name and shame the vendor because I think he just buys off of someone else. So it's, it's arguably not his fault. But I, I do think I'm going to go ahead and redo the build with this white one and then just these regular buttons because... It'll look more boring, but it'll actually work, and hopefully I can get the <laughs> drilling holes correct, and that way it doesn't look like a Frankenstein experiment back there. But, um, yeah, so let me go ahead and finish this. Uh, a few more things I need to tell you guys about. Uh, here's the thing. I, I should tell you that you need to get a second case. I would highly recommend that. Just so that the first one, you can know that you're going to screw up. You're totally going to fuck up the first build on this thing. But then hopefully you'll have a second one that you could learn from your mistakes, learn from my mistakes, and then make one that's very good. But for now, let me put this all together, and I will be right back. 
All right, guys, this build is finished, and here's what the completed unit looks like. So, yeah, I totally screwed up these backboards, but hey, it's my first time. Cut me a little bit of slack. And also, I'm using the gray shoulder buttons because those blue ones will not work. I've tried so many times, and I can't get it to work. I know that there are other people who use colored buttons, so I don't know if it's a problem with just that supplier that I got them from, or if they all require modification like that. And I know that some of you are going to say, like, oh, dude, you just got a bad batch. Of course, you know, with any with anything manufactured, there's going to be some defects that go out. But I got a second set from that same manufacturer. And again, these were having the same, same problem. The right shoulder button will get stuck. The left one feels a little, a little bit too cramped. And these ones right here, these gray ones that just came with uh, the shell, they work just fine. So again, it is the buttons themselves. I'm not going to name and shame the manufacturer, like I said, because I don't know. I think that he gets his buttons from someone else, but be careful. Use your own due diligence. Just watch out, okay? <laughs> and uh, Otherwise, I'm really happy with the fit and finish of this thing. Uh, I didn't tell you guys how long it took to make it because uh, it became meaningless after I had to spray it out between several days. I do recall that when I stopped the timer, I stopped it when I was having those issues with the screen where I was getting like the white screen and everything because that ribbon wasn't connected properly, and um, which was my fault. But I remember that the timer said four and a half hours. So that's how long it took me to actually like make this like with all the drilling, with all the shaving off the plastic, everything like that. It took me four and a half hours. I think it is skill based. I'm, I'm a very much a novice on this. I have never done a mod like this before. So because of that, I think that that's why it took me so long. If you're a hobbycraft master who just makes stuff like this every day, you're probably going to take maybe about an hour or two to make this, but first time out for me, it was four and a half hours. So just watch out for that. It's not the easiest build. Uh, you can do it. Again, I'm, I'm a total novice and I was able to pull this off. You can do it, but it's not the easiest thing to do. But if you really want to see these results, then it might just be worth it. And uh, yeah, the errors and everything that I made are just spotted all over this device. Uh, there's, you know, these scrapes, you know, from when I didn't realize it was rubbing while I was using the Dremel. Um, these buttons right here, as you can see, this one is really huge. And this one was actually done pretty well, the right button right there. But yeah, this left one, I had to do quite a bit of modification because it just wasn't getting in there right. And um, yeah, it, the drill, it will drift a little bit while you're, uh, even after you mark it. So you gotta be careful with that. I hope that you guys can use this video to see what are the first time mistakes that you would make with this and hopefully you can avoid them. Uh, or like I said, get a second shell and that way this could be your rough draft. I know this is my rough draft. And then hopefully the second shell, which as you saw, I already have a second shell. I will go ahead and try and make this much better, especially with the port situation. I mean, like for instance, this bottom one, I kind of thought just putting it together that that USB, um, connector was going to go a little bit lower and it turns out it didn't so I took away plastic when I shouldn't have and uh, this port I might have to enlarge it just a little bit on the left hand side uh, I do have one USB cable the uh, micro USB cable that will fit in there just fine and so it is workable but it, for comfort I might shave off a little bit more and uh, then the HDMI adapter, this is probably going to become a meme on my channel because of the whole GPD-1 thing. But yeah, it is inaccessible right there because I just didn't cut away in the plastic. And uh, I'll have to do that if I want to use that. I'm still deciding. And uh, yeah, that's just what I have right there. This part remains open on their other model, the earlier model of this, the FreePlay Zero, which uses a Raspberry Pi Zero instead of the Pi 3 Compute module. That one is pretty cool because out of the cartridge slot, that's where all these ports are. They just hang out right there. So um, I'm not sure if it's better because of that or not. I actually kind of like it right there, how this is just like a big vent. And uh, that little heat sink right there, that actually picks up a lot of heat. I've touched it when it was running and it was pretty hot. So uh, I'm glad that this has a big open vent right there. And... Um, yeah, otherwise it's pretty good. Uh, it has some specks of dust under here just because there's so much modification I was doing while I was putting this together. But hopefully when I redo it, then I could go ahead and get that taken care of. And uh, I'm not going to show any gameplay right now. Uh, let me just turn it on, as a matter of fact. Okay, uh, remember, it is computer, so you got to hold this on. And thankfully, it just stays in place right there. Then when the green comes on, then you take it off. And then RetroPie, yay! Yeah, this is my first RetroPie device. I've never had any other experience with RetroPie, 
but it is amazingly simple to get it up and running. And uh, so let's see, so far I have Atari 2600, Game Boy Advance, Game Boy Color, Sega Master System, Genesis, or Mega Drive, uh, Nintendo Entertainment System, and that's it. Uh, oh wait, Super Nintendo, yeah. So that's what I have running on it right now. And uh, I, I don't know if I'll add any more emulators on there, well, any other ROMs on there, but getting ROMs on the thing was very, very simple. Let me show you how I do it. You just get a regular plain Jane USB drive, and uh, you add a folder on here and put it in your computer, then uh, add a folder to it and title it RetroPie. So just that, just RetroPie. Then you take it out and then you put it in this unit, uh, leave it in there while it's running for about maybe 10 or 15 seconds, take it out, put it back into your computer, and then you're gonna see that now that RetroPie folder has all these folders for ROMs in there. So, and they're all empty of course. But go ahead and dump your ROMs in there, take it out of your computer, put it back into this, while it's running, of course, and then wait maybe about five minutes or so because it's gonna transfer all the ROMs onto the SD card for this thing. You can't just take out the SD card and then put it in your computer, that's not gonna work. You have to transfer it uh, this way or you could also do like some other wireless transfer or something, but I wanted to do this because it was very simple. So leave it in there for a few minutes uh, until the light stops blinking. And unfortunately this one, I hate this USB drive, it blinks regardless. So it's a little bit of guesswork, but still, just wait for it to all load up in there. Even if you take it out midway, which I did, <laughs> uh, it's not going to kill it. So don't worry. Uh, you could always put it back in, and then it'll go ahead and uh, continue where it was um, uh, writing all the ROM folders in there and everything. So then just go ahead and restart it, reboot it. And there you go, presto, all the emulators are there. I didn't retile these. I didn't have to put in you know PNG files or anything. This was like the easiest thing I've ever done as far as like modding and you know getting an emulator to work and everything it was so damn simple it's great and uh, I'm not gonna show any gameplay right now or give you my final opinions because this review is still ongoing this is just the assembly video I just wanted to put this together and show you guys how easy that is to do or how hard it is and I'll let you guys decide how easy or hard that was and whether you would want to take the plunge but um, like I said, it wasn't the easiest thing, but it is totally doable. I am proof of that, that a moron can put this together. So yeah, I, I'm, I'm pretty happy with it so far. That's, that's the only thing that I will tell you as far as opinions go. I've of course played a few games on here and I gotta say I'm pretty impressed so far, but that could all change. But the reason that I'm not gonna give my opinions is that I'm gonna take this thing to PAX South. I'm taking it on the road. I always think that's the best way to test a portable device like this. Take it on the road, use it as it's intended, and see how it works. So this is going to go with me to PAX South. I will be there. If you guys want to meet me over there, go ahead and uh, just let me know. I'll find a way to meet up with you. Uh, hell, you guys can even test this while you guys are there. So uh, if you guys want to check this out and you're going to the show, then just ask me and then I'll let you play it. And uh, yeah, so I hope this is going to turn out well. But I'm not going to give you my final opinions right now because it's just not ready. And I will let you guys know how this uh, how this worked out over at PAX South. Uh, I'm really eager to use this on the way over there because uh, sometimes the lines, the panels, the wait, the wait time it it gets to you. So you need something to keep you keep yourself occupied. I've always brought something at PAX South. Last year I brought the Xperia Play, and uh, maybe this is going to be better than the Xperia Play. I don't know. We're going to have to see. But you won't know that until I get back. PAX South is uh, coming up on Friday, Saturday, Sunday, which is, I think, 12th, 13th, 14th. And, um, yeah, I hope to see you guys there. And you will see the free play CM3 if you're there and you, and you get a chance to see me. Until then, I will see you guys when I get back. And I will give you my final verdict on this. See ya.